It's big dog season. And you can't stay still because you want it. Mm-hmm. Talk that talk, George. You still scraping your plate because you're hungry. Mm-hmm. Talk that talk. Good morning. Today is Thursday, the September 12th. The year is 2000. And 20. I was going to do a video on September 11th yesterday, but what happened over here yesterday? Oh, there was a lot going on over here yesterday. Um, Rosie came in here to clean. I had somebody come over. It was just a lot of people running in and out of this house yesterday. So I couldn't. And it started like literally at 6.30 in the morning. So I didn't get a chance to do a video about September 11th. Um, I was going to do a video about where I was on September 11th. I never clearly remember I was renovating the house on East Lake Drive in, in the East Lake neighborhood. We were actually living in that house while the house up in, on, in Buckhead was being renovated. Uh, so we were staying in a temporary home that morning of September 11th when all that stuff went on. So yeah, I'll never forget where I was on September 11th. I was, I was literally laying in that house watching TV, talking to a, a um, kitchen cabinet um, lady, and we were on the phone and all that stuff kicked off. But anyway, um, wow, today's been a doozy of a week. This has been a very interesting summer because I wasn't in the best of, um, you know, I had my teeth done, so that kind of created some issues. And I just wasn't really overall feeling in the best this summer. So I had a lot of clients that came into to my home, came into this house, sat here in this kitchen. I sat and worked with them. Over the years, I've worked with clients. I've, I've, helped, I've helped clients to lose over 100 pounds through diet, exercise, work, supplements, a mixture of things. And for some odd reason, these people, these motherfuckers just ain't grateful. Somebody takes the time to sit down with your fat ass, help you get your shit together, help you get on the right path, get everything going, and it's the best you ever look in your ratchet ass fucking life. You know, I've had to, over the, this year, y'all, I was not playing. If you got on my nerves, if you walked into my home and you got on my fucking nerves, by the time you got to that car, car and drove off, you were blocked and deleted. I wasn't playing. And... I have learned I am of an age where I don't want to be bothered. If if you irritate me and we just on the level of personal training, trying to get your fat ass in shape, trying to get you on the right path. If you come into my home and you get on my last motherfucking nerves, and I, as I've gotten older, it's gotten easy to get on my last motherfucking nerve. Let me just assure you of that. I, I but it, Listen, I, I have tried to refrain from cussing motherfuckers out, but I have really started cussing people, people out. Sometimes you get in the point in life, you just don't want to be bothered with people and their fucking ignorance. If you're an ignorant fool, stay the fuck away from me. Add this big fat motherfucker. He dropped over 100 pounds. Best he ever looked. And he's sending me all these crazy text messages. And yeah, I'm like, dude, what is your fucking problem? You know? We going back and forth. And I'm like, why am I why am I wasting my time going back and forth with this bastard? We still got oh, you still got a ways to go. What is your issue? And so finally it dawned on me. Block and delete this nigga be done, but I went on and blocked and delete his ass. I said, okay, I had enough. He think I'm playing with his ass. Block me. I don't have time for this shit. Well, the next day he come knocking at the door. I look out there on the ring camera. I ain't answer. He ring the doorbell, no, no answer. I, I just, I'm, I see his black ass out there. I, mean, I just want to apologize. I know you hear me. I wasn't in a good mood, and man, I really appreciate your help. And blah blah blah. I did not much, y'all. I'm not going to go this back and forth with people because I don't need you. For some odd reason, some people seem to think I need you. When I dump clients like that. I can go pick up 10 more clients. They ain't got to deal with all them issues. But I have to constantly stay on the phone with you about all kinds of bullshit. I can just be done with your ass and I move on to somebody else. Less stress, more money. I'm not in this, I'm not, I don't do anything just for the sake of doing this. Y'all seem to be confused. Some people seem to be thinking I'm just sitting over here doing this for fun. I'm, I'm not. I'd rather go to Disney World. 
when you walk through my door, you know you damn near four hundred pounds, and you have you have done everything you could to lose this weight over the years. And you from working out twelve hours a day, you did everything, but you still four hundred pounds. And the first time in your life, we finally drop a hundred pounds off, and you still not happy. My price is too high. You done been to every doctor. You done ran in this place and that place. Nobody's been able to help you. Nobody's been able to get help you. you look, this is the best you ever looked in your motherfucking ratchet ass life. Get the fuck out of my face. And fast. Coming down 100 pounds, you still got all the muscle. You still look good. No health issues along the way. I've had this problem several times. I had another actor who came around here. You know, I could deal with these fake ass actors here. You know, everybody want to be an actor, sing a song, write a dance, a post, post man, post, postal delivery worker. <laughs> that's, that's the one job they better keep is that postal delivery worker. That's that shit ain't working. They always walk through the door, bodies look a I look horrible. Bodies look a mess, y'all. There's no reason to come see me if you look like a superstar. That's what you're here for. No, you come here because I need help. Help, 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 help. And so we sit here, we come up with a game plan, and we work at it. Then we get you to where you look the best you ever looked in your life, and then they always act a motherfucking fool. I mean, it's just time and time again, these ungrateful ass niggas is always you ungrateful ass niggas. Instead of saying being grateful that somebody has taken the time, showed you what to do, put something together to help you, because you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. Trial and error for years, finally get you on the right path, and then you cuss them out. You don't like the person no more. I'm like, and, that's, and half the time I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, what did I do to this person? Oh, I know what I did. I helped this person look the best they ever look in their ever motherfucking life, and they're ungrateful. Block and delete. I'm not playing y'all. Mm, I'm the wrong person to go with this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hit, Mr. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde bullshit. If you buy pull, you better see it up front. Well, so I buy pull, I go crazy sometimes. Okay, you better see it up front because let me tell you something. If I don't know where you're coming from and I don't, I'm not understanding your bipolarism and I'm not understanding your crazy behavior, I do understand block and delete. And I'm real swift about that. And I'm at a point now that once I block and delete you, once that decision has been made by the higher ups in my head, they do, you know, the Supreme Court up here, it's a wrap. We're not going back. Find somebody else. We're not going back there. Because you ruined it. You ruined it. We're not going back there. <laughs> That's done. Don't come over here no more. Don't call me no more. Don't switch different phone numbers. Don't email me. Leave me alone. We have we were on a path. We were having great success. You fucked it up. I didn't. You did. Ciao. And I had another friend who does something similar to what I do, and he was like, Walter. These guys are calling me, but you didn't block and delete it. And he's like, tell me what happened. I said, whatever happens between me and you, me and, hot, me and them, you're welcome to take them as a customer. <laughs> yeah, but if you got rid of them, <laughs> what, something has to happen. I said, no, that just means between he, he and I. This is what happened between us. And willy, 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 nothing. I just get tired of bullshit. I mean, if you want to take them as a client, then proceed forward with caution. You see what happened over here. Now, there have been several instances where I had to get rid of a client and then they went to somebody else I knew and then they had to get rid of them. And they went to, so it's like, okay, so it's not just me. <laughs> it wasn't just me. There's other people they had these problems with. Back in the day, I used to let guys come back. I'd give them a second chance. I had a guy I was dealing with. He had some whole bunch of mental health issues that happened between he and I. And it was his wife who actually came to see me and said, hey, my husband needs help. You're the only person who could work with him. 
I'm begging you because he's he's got all these dreams and aspirations. Help him. You you were helping him achieve this, these goals. Now, this was some time ago. I did let him back in on the roster, and then we just see everything. We ain't had no problems since that time. However, I'm not built like that no more because I know people. I, 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 I sometimes, and I'm just saying this because you're in my home, it's most of the time I'm just here by myself with these individuals. I feel uncomfortable with somebody who all of a sudden gets angry with me about nothing. I've done nothing to you but help you look at the best you ever looked in your entire life. All of a sudden you have a beef with me and I don't know nothing about this beef. All of a sudden you have a problem with me and I don't even know where it came from. You can't come back here no more. You just can't. I can't let you back in my house. I don't even want to be around you. We can't even talk on the phone to communicate. Something wrong with you, not me. If you're having mental health issues and whatever else is going on, and it happens, go resolve those issues with a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychiatrist. And that's that. You can't, don't get mad, don't need to get mad at me. You can find other people who do what I do. I ain't the only person. They got a lot of them out there. Good luck finding a good one. 30 years experience. Good luck with that. Your price is too high. You don't have to pay it. You don't have to pay it. If, my, if you think my price is too high, you don't have to buy nothing I have for sale over here. Or nothing. You, you don't have to do anything. You can leave. <laughs> That's what I would do. If I walked into a department store or someone's, and it was price was too high, I would leave. There were people who came to renovate my house and they came over with some prices I thought was too high. I didn't say nothing to them. I just said, okay, thank you. I took the price code and said, I called somebody else. Nah, I didn't complain. Your price is too high. And I'm, no, I didn't say none of that. I was like, okay. This ain't gonna work. I mean, good luck. But the problem that really gets on my nerves and irritates the fuck out of me is these people, these are... Some of these individuals, y'all, I swear to y'all, if you saw what they looked like before they came to see me, if you saw what their bodies looked like, if you saw what their physical appearance was, like, I tell them, I always tell them, I take their shirt off. And they take their shirt off, and I was like, oh. okay, we got some work to do. You know, the goal is to lean you out, bring your body fat down without you having sagging skin. And if you don't have sagging skin, we got a, I got a doctor who works with you who can do, help remove that. There are things that we can do, but it requires work and working together. And then this is not, this is not, 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 this is not a miracle happening over here. This stuff takes time. But my clients who've been, the clients that I've been able to work with and we've had good success, who've been with me 10, 15, 20 years, they look amazing. We chat on the phone. Everything's great. They don't even have to drive out here to see me no more. That's, you know, we have a relationship that we can just talk over the phone and FaceTime. You know, I'm like, okay. Then we got these problem children. These problem, problem people. <laughs> and the arrogance. Once they, you know, I, I, I've, you know, you know, once you, you get somebody looking good, boy, they get arrogant as hell. It's the best they ever look in their entire life. I'm looking at the Instagram photos. I'm looking at the comments they telling the people. And I'm thinking in my head, why don't you show people what you look like two years ago? Because you took all those pictures down. Why don't you post those pictures from two years ago? Why are you making it seem like you just genetics? Post the pictures from two years ago. Tell people the journey that you really went through. Tell, be honest, be truthful. They can't do that. They want everybody to think they're some type of superhero. And then they get mad. I don't like what you said. What did I say? I don't like it. You know, it's something about helping black people, and I've learned this in life. They get offended because you can help them. They get angry with you because you have helped them achieve a goal. That's weird to me. I, I've helped you achieve a goal that you desperately wanted, you got there. 
and then you get angry and mad at me. Where did that come from? Where did this anger come from? You're mad at me because I helped you achieve a goal that you had been trying to reach for years and you were never able to get there until you came to see me. We sat down, we came up with a plan, we achieved the goal. It took some time, but we got there, and then all of a sudden I'm the enemy. And I've learned, every time you help somebody black, whether it's financially, where it's, it's always, not everybody. I'm always grateful when somebody takes the time to show me and educate me and school me on something. I'm grateful, forever grateful to that person. But for some black people, they have a problem with that. They don't, they don't, you help them achieve the goal that they probably would never have achieved on their own. Or they didn't know how to achieve it. And instead of them just saying, thank you, I appreciate it. It turns to um, some type of hate. In I don't even know if I can call it jealousy or envy. I don't even know what to call it, and I don't even know where it comes from. But I've had I've seen this happen repeatedly. So when I realized the signs, and I started getting weird text messages, um, and sometimes you know we might be reading a text message wrong. That's why I prefer to talk to a person. But you know, but you repeatedly text me these weird messages throughout the day. And I'm calling you because I want to talk about what is going on here, but you you don't want to talk, you just want to text. You get the block and delete button because I don't have time to be texting back and forth with you about some bullshit I'm not understanding. I'm not going back and forth with you niggas. I don't care who you are, I have blocked my mother. So now another my mother learned how to text, and, I, and all of a sudden I started getting these long, crazy text messages. I didn't have time for that shit. Block. And she, she got to act together. You know, my goodness, y'all seem to think that life is a bowl of cherries out here. No, it ain't. I have a doctor's appointment today for my shoulders. And I gotta go see another doctor about my hips. For years, I've exercised. Been in the gym for years and I've created a problem here that I have to rectify. I may have to have hip replacement surgery. Or something. I don't know what's going on. All I know is shit don't feel good. And all of a sudden it just hit me like a fucking okay, it came out of nowhere. I mean, they didn't really come out of nowhere. I knew some issues was going on, but I just kind of ignored it. But now it got worse. I said, okay, what's going on here? And I still think it's related to this prep shot, but I ain't taking no more prep shots. So maybe after... The information will go down. We'll, we'll see where well, it's hot in this damn house. But it's raining outside. Yeah, I'm the easiest person in the world to get along with. I don't like to fight. I don't like to argue. I, I, I did 20-something plus years with Earl. And but why? I must, I must have been on fucking crack. You know, seriously. I don't like to fight. I don't like to argue. I'm, I, I like peace. I don't like going back and forth. But if you begin to destroy my peace... That's why when I do y'all, I keep telling y'all this, I don't have a whole lot of friends. I just don't. Uh, somebody was asking, one of my clients in Texas, he was saying, you know, do you, the people that when you first got to Atlanta, are you around any of the people that you first, when you first moved there, and, and, any of those people? No, none of those people around because I got sick of them. I got sick of the backstabbing, which is basically what this is. Be so quick to stab somebody in the back, it just don't make no damn sense. We'll be and we'll believe a bunch of lies and somebody say, I heard somebody that's another that somebody text me. Well, I heard you say, I said, nigga, I ain't discussed you with nobody. What are you talking about? Nobody even knows we know each other. Lose my number. Make it even easier for you. Ignorant motherfuckers. But it's that time of the year, y'all. It is that time of the year. I just saw them pumpkins. I was walking over there to home to uh, a low, uh, Kroger yesterday. I was going to Kroger. And I look, I said, they got pumpkins out here already. I said, it's pumpkins. And I felt that breeze flow, and I saw the leaves. I said, okay. And I got inside that Starbucks. They had cinnamon pumpkin lattes. I said, yeah, it's homosexual season. That explains why all the people getting up so friendly all of a sudden. 
I'm the gym working out, guys. He ain't never paid me no attention. What's up, Walter? Yeah, it's a little chilly outside. I got a video for your ass. Yes, it's homosexual season upon us. And that was supposed to be the video I was going to do today before I got so frustrated after I blocked this nigga here last, late last night. Get on my fucking nerves. So I laying in bed sleep. I got them text messages, text messages. I said, what the fuck is this shit? I blocked. Motherfucker raking me up for this bullshit. I bet you he got a surprise, surprise this morning. He woke up and saw them that messages didn't go through no more. I, I, I blocked his head mid sentence. I blocked my ignorant motherfucker. Uh, excuse me. I have a doctor's appointment today for my shoulders. I'm going to go deal with these people. I can get some answers. It took y'all. I started this journey several months ago with my shoulders. It took multiple appointments to get these MRIs done. They wanted to do left and right shoulder, and finally, and it was just a long process. Finally, I got them done this week. I had the disc. I mean, this one, this took months. Like, damn, every time we made the appointment, they canceled appointments, and then they, because she wanted, they wanted left and right done. They needed to see both. That's what I'm having problems with. But shit, by the time we got the x ray, my shoulders were feeling better. I said, well, shit, I went on and did it. But then the guy said, he saw, he saw, a, um, in this shoulder, he saw a, um, spur. I don't know what that means, but he said he saw a spur in there, a big one. So, but I still have, you know, everything's fine. It's just something's going on. I don't know. Go to the doctor and find out what they say. And that's all I can do. So I was thinking it was a rotator, rotator cuff. And um, the doctor who did the x-rays, the MRIs, because he had to put a dye in there. And he did both shoulders. He was looking. He was like, he could see some stuff. And he was like, it didn't look that bad. But um, I, I'll be going to the doctor today so they can look at the disc and then I'll know what's going on. There's always something, honey. And then I can go see the hip doctor because something ain't going on. Something not right with my hips. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I mean, you know, I, this, this started a few years back, and I just kind of ignored it and just didn't really think about it. It got worse now. I'm like, okay, what? Especially my right hip. I said, what the fuck is going on here? And it's so weird because I've had a lot of friends who've had hip replacement surgeries in recent years, and I'm like, so I've been calling them up asking questions. You know, and I had a good conversation with one of my friends. He just, he's 56 years of age, bodybuilding, always been in the gym working out, but he had hip replacement surgery this summer. And he said, Walter well, was the best decision he made. He said, I, he said, I waited for years to do this. And I said, I don't know why the pain is gone. Literally the day after the same day of the operation, he got me up walking. He said, man, I was, you know, he was still numb up from the operation. But he said, from that day forward, it's just been, everything's been great. He said he regret he went years, years knowing that this problem was going on with his hips. And he, he got it in place. He said he's going to be back in the gym in a few weeks. I need to text him. He, he had texted me yesterday. I need to call him. Um, some people I have great relationships with. Y'all, I'm the easiest person to get along with. I'm very, I'm, I, I, I swear I am. But when you start attack, attacking me, questioning my integrity, questioning who I am as a person, questioning me about all kinds of stuff, um, and using terms like scam, but you lost 100 pounds. This is the best you ever look. You go to your doctor, they're amazed. And you're, you're using sc uh, the, the word scam in a sentence with me. That nigga, that nigga was lucky he wouldn't sit in his kitchen. I probably would have shot his ass and called somebody to come get that body. Come get this body up out of here. I got to have to shoot this damn nigga over here. I'm going to take it someplace and dump it. Yeah, I can make some phone calls like that. Mm -hmm. So you might have to think about that before you come walk up into my kitchen. You may not make it out of here alive. I'm going to clean that shit up. I'm putting me on some new coffee while you're at it. Thank you, Rosie. Rosie, do more than just clean around here. She's from Guatemala. Any old way, today is Thursday, September 12th. It's raining outside to take them dogs outside. We took them outside this morning. Um, Rosie came in. She did a beautiful job yesterday. Including, yeah, when Rosie cleans this house, it's like I'm coming into a five-star resort. It was so funny because I had a, a, um, 
a client who's a, a chef, he works in all these high-end restaurants. He came by. He said, Walter, whoever cleans your house, I need her she, to come. She, she was like, my God, it's just, it smells so good. Everything is beautiful. He just walked around. He said, what does she do to these floors? I don't know how she cleans these floors because I've been watching. But when she cleans these floors, they are spotless. You can eat off of them. That's how they look. The floors look immaculate. The, everything just looks great when she does. Rosie is, she did. I don't know what she, I've been trying to pay attention, but she, you know, she does her thing and then she's out. She does spend a lot of time here at this house because it's such a big house. And she, she's a perfectionist. Everything is just, everything's clean. And when you walk through, it's like you just, it's like you're walking into a five star resort. That's why I don't mind paying her to come in here because this is my resort. This is my home. This is where I live. I can't always be in Mexico. But when I come in here after she's clean and it's spotless and it smells so good, I said, oh, I'll just take a shower and get in bed. Sheets are clean. She has a way of making up the bed. And she puts, she washes my, some of my uh, clothes and she puts a special detergent. I don't know what she does, but the sheets be so comfortable. Everything be so, I just don't know. And I wash the sheets. I, I never get my sheets like that. And I, I, when, I, when she washes it, she says, I wash it for you. And she washes it and she puts something in the washing machine and, dries the stuff and makes up the bed and it's just like heaven. I'm like, okay, what does she do? I can't figure that out. And, you know, I don't really have time to, to, to watch everything she's doing because she's, she's as, she has, she comes in with her mom, but they do, they, they do a damn good job. Your home should be something that you come home that you feel proud to come home to. It, and I've tried to get people to understand this because I've been to friends' houses. So you got these, they have these homes and they can't maintain them. Have somebody come in and clean that house once or twice a month. Top to bottom, a thorough cleaning. You will love your home because it will smell. It feels like you're walking into a five star hotel. You know, so invest. If you're going to buy these houses, get somebody to clean these damn house professionally, especially if you're not that type of person who has time to do it. I don't have time to do this. And a lot, this woman does this for a living. And she's a lot younger than me. And so she's vacuuming and cleaning. She does an immaculate job. And, you know, I've had a couple of cleaners over the years, but this, she is probably the best because she makes her own these fragrances. I mean, it's just, just, I can't complain. I pay her. I only pay this woman's money because it's gorgeous. So she did this. She was in here yesterday and she did a damn good job. Normally she comes on the weekend, but I had her come early this week. But anyway, today is Thursday, the September 12th. I need to hop in the shower. I'm starting to get dressed. It's raining out there to get this damn doctor's appointment. They can tell me what's going on with my shoulders. There's nothing like not feeling good. This summer, in between my teeth, shoulders, and hips, was not fun. You know, it just wasn't. And then you got grouchy clients coming at you, attacking you about Shit, you don't even know what the fuck is going on. No, okay, is these niggas crazy? Yeah, please block in the lead. I ain't got time for that shit. I get rid of your ass so damn fast, I can go out and get 10 more clients. There are a lot of, you gotta be very honest with y'all. People call me all the time. I can't get to everybody, so I, I don't even try. A lot of people call, get mad, leave messages. I, say, I can't, it's, I'm just one of me. Ouch. That's all I can do. But I will get rid of a couple of badass clients and bring in good clients. So if you come, if you if you get invited into my home and get to sit here in this kitchen with me and we sit and talk, be grateful because a lot of people never make you're not gonna make it through my front door. It ain't happening. But anyway, enough of that for today. Today, Thursday, September twelfth, year two thousand twenty four. Y'all have a great, beautiful day. I hope you hope I saw so it flooded down in New Orleans. Something happened down in New Orleans with the storm. We got the remnants of it here in Atlanta now. It's going to be raining today. Hope y'all have a beautiful wet Thursday. Try to stay dry. I'm out of here. And enjoy this gorgeous, beautiful wet day. Enjoy the rain.